Hey, thanks for coming back to the Revelation class here at Faith Assembly of God. Hope you're enjoying these. We're trying to do them in smaller bite-sized pieces for you to meditate on and think about and and uh, study on your own. If you haven't yet, you may want to go read Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Uh, we looked in a previous video, we looked at the background of the church at Smyrna uh, and, and its place in the seven churches. It was north of Ephesus, if you remember. It would it's the second, it would have been the second church to receive this epistle. And today we're looking at the characteristics of Christ, which is real hard to say sometimes. Uh, the characteristics of Christ that are mentioned in the portion of this letter to the church of Smyrna. Now it says, and to the angel of the church of Smyrna write the first and the last who was dead and was and, and has come to life says this. I'll, I'll read that again. He's the first and the last who was dead and has come to life. And he is saying to the churches, okay, what does that tell us about Jesus? Well, this is actually echoing back to chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, but it's also an echo of God's own description of himself that we see in Isaiah 44, 6. And that's kind of an interesting window into the Trinitarian nature of the Godhead. It reads, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and there is no God besides me. So Christ is presented as eternal, and then it mentions the fact, an important fact in Christianity, that he was dead and has come to life. Now you might say, well, why is that so significant? Well, what's significant about this is up until this point, despite all the naysayers, all the people who were poo-pooing Christianity, all the people who condemned the Christians, who persecuted them, they could still not prove that Jesus had not risen from the grave. They could not provide a body. They couldn't substantiate any argument against these Christians because they couldn't produce a body of their supposedly risen Savior. If they could have produced a body, Christianity would have crumbled right then and there. But they couldn't. So Christ is presented as this eternal being and there's nothing the world can do about it. And no matter what this church suffers through, no matter what this church goes through, and the same is true for us, the Lord lives. He's still alive. We do not worship a dead beggar, a dead man, a dead prophet, a dead teacher. We don't follow the teachings of somebody who is completely dead, rotting away in a grave somewhere. Some religions do that, not Christianity. We serve a living God who became man, died on a cross, rose from the grave, and lives even now. In fact, that's, that's pretty much the gospel. Jesus Christ died on a cross for our sins, he was buried, raised from the dead, ascended to the Father. That's what the Apostle Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, if you're watching these videos and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I just want to take time real quick, and I'll probably do this periodically in the series, but if you've not accepted Christ, I would challenge you to, in humility, just pray, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I've, I've chosen everything else but you. But today I choose you. If you would like to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life, today's a great day to do that. In the meantime, God bless you guys. We'll see you in the next video.